I just made it. I released the video before the end of 2021. Which happens to be the 5th, 16th anniversary of Accelerators airing on Cartoon Network. And it's got me reminiscing. Man, I love this show. I feel like one of the many reasons why this show is still so memorable and investing all these years later is the main antagonists of the series, Glorm and the Racing Drones. Even though they are somewhat cliche, I mean, there's so many evil robot armies in media, even other Hot Wheels media, they're still such threatening antagonists. Is it just because of the musical motif? Maybe, but also, I think the iconography is a huge part of it, such as the black and green color scheme, the spider-like emblems, and the Racing Jones language. The 8-bit text that appears on various Racing Jones technology. I didn't think much of it at first, until I learned about the fact that it's actually translatable. A full decoded sheet for the language exists within this abandoned patent by Mattel, and it shows every single letter and number directly corresponding to English. As an example of this code, they show an illustration of RDO9 packaged in a blister card that has the English version and the coded version side by side. The cross reference of the two, in a toy owl for example, being the form of translation. It's an interesting idea, but it didn't happen officially, which is a shame. After all, these are non-limiting examples, and they're really just showing possibilities rather than set in stone plans. Another example described in the patent was using the language as codes for hidden website content or hidden levels in a video game. This concept was used, however, as six digit codes could be found on the bottom of all the 2005 Accelerator's cars. They unlocked wallpapers, music, and other miscellaneous digital content through the Accelerator's website. Except they use traditional letters and numbers instead of the language. This translation sheet feels like the sort of thing they would put in a kid's magazine or the back of a cereal box, but it never came to be. And I don't think it was planned to either, because in a 2004 article on Diecast X by Nathan Proch, one of the inventors attributed to the patent, he talks about the upcoming series at the time, Acceleracers, and he mentions the Racing Drones code. For fun, the Hot Wheels graphics group created a Racing Drones alphabet that's the foundation for all the graphics on the cars. If you can decode the language, you'll be able to read the messages on the Racing Drones cars. I find it really interesting how he talks about it in a very nonchalant way. Specifically about if you can decode it. While the drone version of the packaging didn't end up getting used and the sheet wasn't commercially shown, there were other methods of deciphering the code. The Racing Drones cars feature their code on their graphics, so you would be able to figure out R, D, and all the numbers 0 through 9. Oddly enough, the patent says this symbol corresponds to 10 when it's functionally used as a zero. So if you want to get technical, RD10 is actually 110. And RD04 is 10 for dinosaur. <laughs> There's also what's probably the most extensive use of the language, the opening credits of Ignition, where it shows every credit in code before flipping into English. But well, because of the nature of just having names and titles, it doesn't feature every letter. It's missing the letters F, J, L, M, Q, V, X, and Z. So without the patent, we wouldn't have been able to translate everything. Well, with the patent in our hands, my tangents put aside, but let's just start translating more stuff. I already mentioned the opening credits of Ignition earlier, but the code also appears earlier than that in the cold open where RDL1 hunts down Dr. Tesla. When we switch to the drone's perspective, we are shown its user interface. To the top left, we can see the ID for the drone, which is RDL1, 
which stands for Racing General Lieutenant 1. Primary sensor is displayed at the top. And in the center, scan sensor is displayed on both sides of the marker, which itself displays scan mark. This UI screen gets reused throughout the series, even when it doesn't apply, like for the Sweeper Racing Drones vision. Actually, now that I think about it, we never got an official name for this little Sweeper Drone pilot guy. This would have been a cool way to reveal it. Another UI element is this screen. It displays comm windows, so it's pretty multi-purpose. It's reused throughout the series as the recon drone camera feed, as the sweeper camera feed, and the glorm comm windows. In the next shot, we can see RDL1 has text on his chest that say RDL1. I know, obviously, but this is interesting because the illustrated version of the lieutenant drone has RDO 8 instead the car he transforms into I think this was an early idea that was abandoned over time let me explain in another quote from Nathan Proch they don't sit in their cars to drive they transform themselves in the cars it might have been too expensive for the animation studio to have every drone match an individual car so in the movies, while the Lieutenant Drone does transform into RDO-8, he also drives other cars, namely RDO-5. RDS-1, which stands for Racing Drone Soldier 1, shares design elements with RDO-6, yet he only functions as a driver. We never see him transform into RDO-6. In fact, in the opening credits, we see he's just place into his own car. On the topic of the lieutenant, his model was reused for Galorm's true drone form, so they end up sharing the same text and symbol despite Galorm possibly having a symbol of her own through her car, RDO9. Also she doesn't have an ID label like the regular drones. In Glorum's human form, she wears a necklace that plainly just says Glorum. It's kind of weird, but Vert also has his name engraved in the soles of his shoes, so maybe it runs in the family. In Breaking Point, we see a portrait of Vert's mother, and it has a striking resemblance to Glorum, so that- and- and Vert's mother is implied to be dead, so does that, that mean Glorum is actually Vert's mother, and are they connected- Vert's mother's portrait can be seen in Monkey's room for some reason! The movies aren't the only place where the code can be seen, of course. In the second wave of the Exorcist toy line in 2006, Hot Wheels released the drone series of cars, featuring cars from the other teams getting a racing drone-themed coat of paint. As we know, the format of the regular racing drones vehicles are the team initials RD, followed by the number 1 through 10. This format is also used for the drone versions of Flathead Fury and Baseline. The text on the side of Flathead Fury has MM06, MM referring to the Metal Maniacs, and 06 referring to 2006 or paralleling with RDO6. Next, Baseline. You would think since Baseline is a Teku vehicle, it would say TK or something, but it actually doesn't. It says SK08. 08 is probably paralleling with RDO8, but SK? It might refer to the Streakings, which can only be seen on this Power Ridge concept art by Eric Cern. Because Power Rage ended up as a Teku vehicle, the Street King seemed to be an earlier iteration of the Teku. And because Teku is only one initial, maybe that's why they chose the earlier name for the team to fit the name scheme better. The code also shows up in this Racing Jones truck design that was released in 2010 and re-released 
with the modern Hot Wheels logo in 2011, long after the Exorcist's discontinuation in 2006. The text on the side of the truck says RIS 2009. 2009 probably refers to the year it was designed, but RIS? It seems like an acronym. Um, I'm not sure what it could be. It's, it's probably just the initials of the graphic designer. The car included with the truck, RDO5, has the same paint as the Accelerator's version, just with different wheels. Well, different from the already different wheels. Alright, I'll stop translating stuff here. I only picked a handful of interesting ones that I came across, but there's still plenty more. If you're interested in translating the code yourself, I'll leave a link to the patent for decoding text and also to this great fan-made Racing Jones font by n slash a, no really, that's her name, for coding text in the description. It's a bit difficult to translate, especially if the text you're trying to translate is blurry, but it's so satisfying to finally figure out what the resulting piece of text says. Over the course of making this video, I realized how much care and effort went into making the racing drones a fleshed out part of the Exorcist's world. They didn't even have to make the whole language, so according to Nathan Proch, the design team just designed it for fun. Just for fun. Well, thanks for watching my video, stay safe, and See you whenever I make another video.